In a wide and very fertile valley, amid gardens and orchards, on a bend of the River Elbe, lies the city of Dresden. After years of bluff, threat, and fear, the tight-wound springs of war snapped. The European dictators fell upon weak and divided neighbors with new forms of war and mass terror, the blitzkrieg and aerial bombings of civilians. One by one, the independent nations fell before the aggressor. I now possess, declared the Führer, the voted confidence of the German people. General Wagon has called the Battle of France is over. The Battle of Britain is about to begin. These cruel, wanton, indiscriminate terror on what remained of Germany through loyal toadies, even as his shattered and abandoned armies collapsed, pushed the Germans to fight on hopelessly for a victory which had long since been lost.
the refugees streaming away from the fighting in all directions at Hitler's command trudged wearily into the ever smaller remnant of unconquered Germany. Hitler ordered everyone able to fight for every bit of German soil, to destroy what was left behind, and to retreat as necessary to some imaginary bastion in Germany's interior. In the rump of the Third Reich, between the pressing Allied armies, devastated cities barely functioned, but life carried on in deserts of carnage. Children and the old, in this total war, did the factory work and volunteered to fight under the promises of their leaders. Hitler announced grand schemes. All Germans would rise up in a storm of people to throw back the invaders, an army, he said, of Germany's greatest idealists. It marched away to fight Soviet, British, and American tanks, old men and boys against steel. Allied bombing policy in Germany was specifically written to cover targets of military value, but in fact it covered both attacks on obvious military and industrial targets as well as mass bombings of the German civilian population. Allied military leaders reported these raids to the public at home as strikes on military objectives, but their unspoken goal was the destruction of civilian morale, the disruption of war production through terror, and revenge for German destruction of Warsaw, Rotterdam, and London. By 1944, the German skies were covered day and night with thousands of Allied planes. Long before the atomic bombs fell on Japanese cities, the techniques of conventional bombing had so far advanced that Air Force leaders could plan the creation of storms of fire in which those inhabitants who escaped the bomb shock and destruction were baked in cellars or smoked and incinerated in other places of refuge. Whole cities could be destroyed in one raid. West and East came the daily Allied assaults on the heart of Germany. Everywhere the tramp of forlorn refugees who had seen the mask of death moving inland. Prisoners were driven back thousands of miles into Allied camps. Cities burned, some torched deliberately by the vengeful Russians.
nor were the allied passions of hate and revenge against a cruel enemy moderated by the grisly discoveries of the camps of death and torture Hitler had ordered for the millions whose religion or language The Germans abroad, the refugees and prisoners, bore the wrath of those their comrades had tortured, as the German people felt or awaited the same. But in fear, naive faith, or desperation, they fought on. Children marched out singing to put barbed wire in the face of the final Allied assaults, a child's game to stop thousands of planes and tanks. late in the war when the name Dresden came to the top of Bomber Command's target list. That night, the city waited on the fortunes of war, crammed with thousands of refugees fleeing the Soviet armies only 80 miles away. Dresden's number had come up. As the Circus Sarasani ended its regular performance on the evening of February 13, 1945, the German Air Raid Protection Service announced the approach of the first waves of Allied planes. But all anti-aircraft defense units had been sent to the front, and the few German fighters available for defense were never able to get into the air. Visibility was good, weather conditions fine, enough to abet the Allied aims. Well over a million people in a cultural heritage of centuries waited below. blitz on Germany, Allied airmen link up their attacks with Marshal Stalin's armies. British bombers head for Dresden, the Saxony bastion of the Nazis along the eastern front. And up comes Goebbels' newest secret weapon, a scarecrow, exploding like a plane hit by Akak.
800 RAF Lancasters splash 650,000 incendiary bombs on transportation lines in Germany's seventh largest city. They smash a big Reich roadblock across the Russian advance. Damage to Dresden, hampering the Wehrmacht, helps Konya's forces 70 miles away. Out of the West, 1,350 American bombers of the 8th Air Force streak their vapor trails into the dawn. For two full days, Miles of these bombers hammered Reich factory and railroad centers in the east. Chemnitz, Magdeburg, Cottbus. The veteran 1st Division of the 8th Air Force today carried its 200,000 ton of bombs to help an ally. Now they hit Dresden, hardest of all. The Blitz here, Blasting away for the Russians now 45 miles away, links the two front allied drive from east and west on Berlin. In a wide and very fertile valley, amid gardens and orchards, on a bend of the River Elbe, lies the city of Dresden. The German people swore to stand as one man behind the Führer and to march with him whatever might come. What he has done is to kindle a fire in British hearts which will glow long after all traces of the conflagration he has caused in London have been removed. He has lighted a fire which will burn with a steady and consuming flame until the last vestiges of Nazi tyranny have been burnt out of Europe. The Führer has led the German people from victory to victory and from triumph to triumph.